A very good evening to you all. Bellwood quizzes, 1 minute 40 to go for this very, very special edition. Don't forget, pens and paper at the ready. Loads of questions tonight. All themed around Great Britain. Bet you can't wait. See you in a bit. a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command, and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Uh, hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. But in the interest of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded along all the fronts. The German war is therefore at an end. A very good evening. Yes. I have been slapped with paint. Anyway, hope you've all had a fantastic VE day. Our street at the Bellwood Massive big up to you guys absolutely fantastic today well done really really enjoyed it so tonight's quiz five quizzes all about great britain or england or wales or scotland or northern ireland so without further ado we will crack on because we've got lots to do tonight so quiz number one is called the great british quiz hmm i wonder what that could be about let's go and have a look here we go quiz one So, quiz one. Just general knowledge questions here. Some tricky ones in. So, here we go. Question number one tonight. In which seaside resort is there a Nelson's Column? So, in which seaside resort is there a Nelson's Column? That's question one. You might have seen it on a TV advert. Question two. The Old Bailey stands on the site of which former prison? The Old Bailey stands on the site of which former prison? I'm laughing at some of your comments, you lot. Thank you, Sean. 9.6. So 
So that's question two. Questions three. What is Scotland's longest river? So question three, what is Scotland's longest river? Some tricky questions tonight. I've got the answers here, dead easy. Uh, question four, name the second largest lake in the Lake District. And if you look closely, I've got rid of the name of it. It's just that one there. That's it, just up there. I'll put my finger on it so you can see. There you go. So name the second largest lake in the Lake District. Question five. The M1 motorway connects London to which English city? So which English city does it connect? London is at one end. What's at the other? That's question five. Tricky one here. Question six. Golden Cap is a hill and cliff situated on the coast of which county? So Golden Cap is a hill and cliff situated on the coast of which county? <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Question seven. Name the only town in England which has a name ending with an exclamation mark. So name the only town in England which has a name ending with an exclamation mark. I can see everybody going, what on earth is that? It's true. Question eight. What was the official language of England from 1066 to 1362? So what was the official language of England from 1066 to 1362? The answer's in there somewhere. Question nine. Which more is well known as the inspiration for the unofficial country anthem? So just think of a song that's Yorkshire. I know Sean might get that one. Don't put it up. So which more is well known for an inspiration of the unofficial Yorkshire country, country anthem? Question 10. Harry Corbett, the creator of the glove puppet character Sooty, played the piano in a West Yorkshire restaurant owned by his uncle. Who was his uncle? So think of a famous person that has a West Yorkshire restaurant. Who was that person? Question number 11. Who became the mayor of London in May 2016? Is that him? Oh, it might be, or it might be a tricky one. Question 12. Which second World War Museum ship is permanently moored on the River Thames? So what's the name of that warship? Easy, good. The second World War II mu ship, which, <laughs> the museum ship which is permanently moored on the River Thames. What's its name? That was question 12. Question 13. Which number Heathrow Terminal is opened by Queen Elizabeth II in March 2008? They are going quite quick. I might whiz through them again, Linda. Keep me on your toes. So which terminal was opened by Queen Elizabeth II in March 2008? Question 14. London Bridge was the only bridge across the River Thames until what date? A, B or C? So A is 1639, B is 1739 and C is 1839. So London Bridge is the only bridge to cross the River Thames until what date? A, B or C? Take your pick. Question 15. What was the name given to the severe air pollution event that affected London during December 1952? What was it called? So the name given to the severe air pollution event that affected London during December 1952. That was it. Actually, 15 questions. Let me know if you want to uh, watch the quiz again. I know they came through quite quickly, but it just keeps you on your toes tonight. Okay. 
So, how did you think questions went there for quiz one, the great British quiz? Some tricky ones in there, I think, tonight. We'll just go to a couple of comments now, and then we'll see if you want me to run through those again, or we'll move on to quiz number two. Okay, let's have a quick look. Colin, it's definitely a no, 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 no. They were really tough, weren't they? Does that mean you need one, Julie, or is that how well you went? Jelly, question 13 and 14. Okay, let's read them out. The question 13 was, which number Heathrow Terminal was opened by Queen Elizabeth II in March 2008? And question 14 was, London Bridge was the only bridge to cross the River Thames until which date? A, 1639, B, 1739, or C, 1839. Okay, that's very kind of you, Linda. Six and seven, six, Golden Cap is a hill and cliff situated on the coast of which country? Uh, county, sorry. Seven, name the only town in England which has a name ending with an exclamation mark. Which moor is well known for its inspiration of the unofficial Yorkshire country, an country anthem? <laughs> I can hear that one in my head. Yes, Grace, very hard indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Fab. So, if everybody's okay with that, we'll crack on to quiz number two, and then we'll go back and do some answers. So, quiz two, dead easy tonight. Really easy. So, it's British or UK landmarks and places of interest. All I need you to do, dead simple, is just put the name of what you see. So here we go, quiz number two. Helen, question 13 was terminal, not runway, terminal, which terminal? Okay, we're ready, quiz number two is coming up. So all you need to do is just name the landmark. So what's that place called? Looks like the top end of Bellwood with lockdown. So that's question one, name the place. Question two, name the place. What's that landmark? Where is that? Question three. Get the idea now? Name the landmark. Where is that? You might have seen that before. <sighs> Tricky one, that, I think. Question number four. Name the landmark. What's that called? Really famous lighthouse and some rocks. And question number five. Believe it or not, name the landmark. What's that called? Oh, just name it. Pop it down on your paper. Quite easy these ones, aren't they? Okay, question number six. Get the idea now. Name the landmark. Where is that? What's it called? No, Christina, you will not just watch and drink. Instead, you will take part. So, name the landmark. Where is that place? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, that one. Number seven coming up right away. So what's the place called? Good evening, Bob. Hope Malaga is lovely this evening. Question number eight. Name the landmark. What's that place? 
called? Hmm. What is it? That's question eight. What's the bridge called? Question number nine. Name the bridge. What's it called? Bonus point if you can tell me how many cars are on the bridge. No, only joking, only joking. That's question nine. Name the landmark. Question ten. Feel like going back to school, Linda. Good. That's what we need. So, well, is that called? Sure, everybody knows that by now. Bungee jumping. Feels like it, Bob. Okay, question 11. Name the castle. And what city is that castle? Question 12. Just say what you see. What is it? And it's not the grass, by the way, or the fields we're looking at here. Give you a clue. Okay, question 13. Grace should get this one. And Lee. Name the building. What is it? Question 14, nearly there. Name the landmark. So what's the landmark called? What's that tower called? Don't forget, all the answers are in the UK. <laughs> well done, Grace. I knew you'd get that one. I hope you get it anyway. So question 15, the last one in this round. Question 15, name the landmark. in the background. Thank you, Sean. Uh, number 15. Have a look at the background. It'll give you an idea, probably. Name the castle. There we go. Dead simple that was, wasn't it? Not too bad at all. What we'll do, we'll take a few seconds just for you to gather your thoughts and uh, stop your brains from frying. Uh, and then we'll go through the answers to quiz number one and two. Let's have a quick look at your comments. Shabba. What do you mean, evil? <laughs> That's just tricky questions. They are horrible this week. Probably. So if everybody just takes a few seconds, and then we'll come back with the answers to quiz number one and quiz number two. Give yourselves a few seconds and we'll be back. Okay, so, God, that cake, oh, yummy. So let's go through the answers to quiz number one. That was a great British quiz. Really tricky questions, I must admit they were tonight. So we'll start off with question one. In which seaside resort is there a Nelson's column? That was Great Yarmouth. Question two. The Old Bailey stands on a site of which former prison? And that was Newgate, Newgate. Question three. What is Scotland's longest river? That was the River Tay, T-A-Y. 
And question four, name the second largest lake in the Lake District. That was Ullswater. Ullswater. Uh, question five, the M1 motorway connects London to which English city? And that was Leeds. And Golden Cap is a hill and cliff situated on the coast of which county? And that was question six, and that was Dorset. I would never have got that one. Question seven, the only town in England that has an exclamation mark at the end, Westwood Ho. And the exclamation mark is at the end of the Ho. No idea. Uh, question eight, what was the official language of England from 1066 to 1362? And if you remember Pierre Baguette from last week, it was French. So French was the official language. Question nine. Which moor is well known as the inspiration of the unofficial Yorkshire country anthem? That was Ilkley Moor on Ilkley Moor Bar Tat, I believe how it goes. And question ten. Harry Corbett, the creator of the glove, buff, glove puppet character Sooty, played the piano in the West Yorkshire restaurant owned by his uncle. But who was his uncle? His uncle was Harry Ramsden founder of the fish and chip shops uh, question 11 who became mayor of london in may 2016 that was sadiq khan his picture was on there but just in case people were thinking was it him it was indeed question 12 uh which second world war museum ship is permanently moored on the river thames and that was hms belfast 13 which terminal uh, did the Queen Elizabeth II open at Heathrow on March 2008, and that was Terminal 5. And London Bridge was the only bridge to cross the River Thames until what date? And it was 1739, so that was B. So 1739 was question 14. And the last one, question 15. What name is given to us the severe air pollution event that affected London during December 1952? And that was called The Great Smog. Mm. So tot up your scores. We'll have a quick look at your comments. Then we'll uh, do the answers to quiz number two. I don't know, Linda, probably not. Good evening, Alan. 11 out of 15, well done. Sophie Lund, disaster. It was really tricky this evening, that was. It was one of the worst ones. Sorry about that. Uh, let's have a look. Colin, 9 out of 15. That's not too bad. They were extremely, extremely tricky this evening. Cheryl, 7, well done. Snaps. Mark, 4 out of 15. Where have you been? Come on. Birthday boy. Happy 50th. Uh, Holly Press, 1 out of 15. I know they were really tricky. Grace, 8. Uh, not too bad, that. Barbara, 7. Paul, 8. Well done. Get Google going for the next rounds. Tot up your scores. What scores? <laughs> okay. Oopsie daisy. Not to worry. Shelley, 9. Okay. Well, we've all done quite well. Sean's there with 6. Helen with 7. Guy, 11. Some late starters, not to worry. People are pinging up now. Nine out of fifteen, James. That's all right. You thought it was. You need Blackpool Tower and the Bridge to come up. I did think that, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. Oh, Linda, come on. You can do better. Billy first. Five out of fifteen. They were tricky. Give us some clues. I'll send you the answers down after I've finished. There you go. Keith Pry, well done. Eight. Lee, five. That's not too bad. Carl, I know it was definitely hard. Though fast, I know. Yeah, 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 husband dragging you down. Well, Bridget with a widget, what can we say? Tony, five. Jabba, absolutely, Mark. Right, without further ado then, let's get back to quiz number two. So here we go, we've got the answers to the landmark quiz. Uh, hopefully everybody will do a bit better now on this one. So just name the landmark. So question one was the Eden Project in Cornwall. Quite easy that one. Number two was Edinburgh Castle. Number three, that was the Glasgow Tower. It's right on the uh, on the river that one. I've seen it a couple of times but I'd never remember it. Anyway, 
Question four was the needles off the Isle of Wight. That was the White House, uh, the lighthouse. Question five was the Angel of the North in Natyn and Weir. Question six was the Albert Dock in Liverpool. And number seven was Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. Number eight was the bridge, and that was the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. Number nine was another bridge, and that was the Humber Bridge. And number 10 was the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Number 11, anybody get that one? It was a tricky one, that was Cardiff Castle. Uh, number 12, Hadrian's Wall. Number 13, come on Grace and Lee, we know you've got this one. The Bull Ring in Birmingham, well done. Number 14 was the tricky, tricky one, I think, was the Emirates Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth. And number 15 was Dover Castle. The hint was there behind, you could see the uh, ferries. But well done everybody. Just tot up your scores quickly and then we'll move on to quiz number three. Okay, let's see what you've done score-wise on this round. Should be better, hopefully. better scores coming through there I think well hopefully Colin got 9 Daryl got 11 some better scores coming up there Yvonne 7 how did you beat Lindra I have absolutely no idea because you do not get the answers Helen Robson 10 Pom got 7 so Gillian 7 out of 15 that's better Tony 8 well done Barbara, 11 out of 15. That's well done. Mark Taylor, 4 out of 15. Wowzers, yeah. Dawn, well done. 10. Uh, Guy, 10. Holly, 8. Well done. 8 out of 9. We had 15 questions, Paul. I don't know what's happened there. Anyway, uh, Grace, 9. Well done. Yeah, well, they're just tricky questions tonight. Uh, Lee, 8. I think round one's just thrown everybody, hasn't it? Better, 10, well done, Keith. Uh, Jim, 12, double figures, well done. Bridget with a widget, 12, well done. Six out of 15, James, that's all right. That's not bad at all. I'm in the spare room tonight, fantastic. Julie, uh, nine out of 15. Carl Taylor, eight. Lucy Jane, good evening, 10 out of 15. Jelly Smart, nine and 10. Not too bad, me thinks. So, some better scores coming through there. Louise just popped up with 9 out of 15. That's really good. Well done, guys. So, what we'll do, we'll have a quick break for a couple of minutes so you can get another gin and tonic and calm your nerves. And then when we come back, we will do quiz number three. Named, I didn't see that. I wonder what that one could be all about. I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, let's go for a break. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Shabba. Sure, the answer to your question is yes. I would hold it against you.
Well, welcome back. How is everybody feeling? Suitably refreshed, I hope. <laughs> uh, apologies for quiz one. It was nasty, wasn't it? It really was. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so, here we go. Without further ado, quiz number three. Now, we've all been social separating, haven't we? We've all been spending lots of time at home. We've not been going out. So I thought, do you know what? It'd be a really, really good idea to get our brains going and do some quizzes on the highway code. Yes, I hear you cry. All those times you drive past those signs and don't pay any attention to them. Well, tonight we will learn something new. So, quiz number three is called I Didn't See That. So, let's run the quiz. Here we go, quiz number three. So, here we go. 15 questions on the road sign. So, what does that road sign mean? Oh dear, Colin. <laughs> so, question one, what does the road sign mean? Just write down what it means. Julie Russell, you need to get some help. So, question two, what does that road sign mean? Everybody should get that one. Even you, Mama Julie. So, question two, what does that road sign mean? Dead easy, these. Question three, what does that road sign mean? And question four, get the idea now. What does that road sign mean? Hmm. It might be Sean, yeah. Question five. What does the road sign mean? It's time to test all those backseat drivers, isn't it, that keep telling you what to do? Let's see what they score. So question six coming up now. What does the road sign mean? Question six. Question number seven. What does that road sign mean? Everybody's quiet tonight, aren't they? Panicking with the quiz this week. And question number eight. What does that road sign mean? Question number nine. Got the idea by now. What does that road sign mean? What's it telling us? Question number ten. I love this one. What does this road sign mean? And it is real. It's official from the DVLA website. So what does that road sign mean? Question 11. So I need an A, B or C here. No waiting at any time. Is it answer A, B or C? So no waiting at any time. Is it A, B or C? And no loading at any time. Is that A or B? So no loading at any time. Is it A or B? Question 13. The lollipop lady there is showing you three things. All vehicles must stop. Is that A, B or C? So which pose is that? Pose A, pose B or C? All vehicles must stop. Question 14. What does the white arrow mean in the middle there on the overhead signs on the motorway? So that white arrow pointing left, what does it mean? Question 15, just name it, what is it? You'll see it on the road as a road marking, but what is it, what's it called? Question 15, the last question. Let's 
So, how did we all get on there? Yeah, interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> so, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do the answers to this quiz really quickly now, and then we can move on and then have a break just before the last quiz. So, quiz three. I didn't see that. So, let's do the answers. Here we go. So, what were the road signs? So, number one was a zebra crossing. We see it all the time, don't we? Number two was risk of ice. So, even if you got the word ice, etc., that's fine. Don't worry about being word perfect. Uh, number three was side winds or cross winds, whichever you want to do. That's fine. Number four was a picnic site. So, picnic site. I know it was 150 yards, but we don't need to worry about that. Number five was end of motorway. So, the end of the motorway. At uh, number six was no through road for vehicles. So, no through road. Number seven, loose chippings. Sounds like an 80s band. Loose chippings was number seven. Number eight was not a tuning fork. It was dual carriageway ends. So I hope you got that right, Linda. At number nine was the tram in the red triangle, and that was tram crossing ahead. And number 10, this is genuinely, genuinely in the highway code. No vehicles carrying explosives was number 10. That was the car with like the explosive sign on top of it. Love it. Number 11 was no waiting at any time. The answer was A. So that was the double lines for that. No loading at any time was A as well. And the lollipop lady, all vehicles must stop. That was C. So that was with her arm out and the hand up with the lollipop. Uh, number 14, the white arrow on the motorway with the overhead sign. And that was change lane in the direction shown. So change lane to the left. And number 15 was the chevron, uh, it's not the chevron, the box on the floor drawn with the lines. And that was a box junction. So there we go, 15 questions on the highway code. I bet you all loved that one. Uh, grab a drink very quickly and let's have a look at some of your comments before we carry on. Hey guys, so quiz is 14 out of 15 for Linda. Well done. Colin, 13. Jelly, 13. Wow, got all these safe drivers. 12 for Sean. Sophie, 14. Barbara's 12. Mr. Bedford, 12 out of 15. Well done. Julia Russell, 12 out of 15. Yeah, right. Come on. Uh, Lucy Jane, 14 out of 15. Well done. Paul, 13. Joe Winder, 13. We might have safe roads, absolutely, when we all get back into the normal swing of things. Fiona, 11, well done. Yvonne, 13. Gerald, 14, well done. Helen, 15 out of 15, wow, blinking heck. Don't believe that. Uh, Guy, 13. Julie, 13 out of 15. James, 12, James, 12 out of 15, really? Wow, amazing. Lee, 14. Tony, what was that? 14, well done. Keith, 15. Blimey, safe driver. Uh, Holly, 11. Well done. Pom, 12. <laughs> no, we don't take speed and fines into consideration. I'd be knackered on that one as well. Bill, 20. Uh, come on, Christina. What was your score, please? Bob Lamb, total of 20. Well done. Louise Ricks, full house. Well done. 15. Gillian, 14. Jim, 12. Well done. Yeah. Come on, Mark Taylor. Put your score up, please. <laughs> Carl Taylor, well done. 13 out of 15. Oh, Barbara, recount 13. That's not too bad. Ava took us five times to pass the test. Oopsie daisy. Well, yeah. Mark Taylor, 16 out of 15, Mark. <laughs> well, considering it's your 50th birthday, well done. Uh, only joking. Uh, 9 out of 15. Christina, 18 out of 45 so far. Well done, Linda. Amazing. So I think everybody did really well on that quiz. I would be quite safe in any of those cars. Mm, yeah, well, sort of. Um, so quiz number four, the telly quiz. 
you're going to like this one it's not as hard as quiz number one let me tell you that because that was absolutely crazy we've got 15 questions here all about British or UK television and it's really really fun okay so pen and paper at the ready gin and tonic at the ready quiz number four here we go Have a lovely show for you this afternoon here on the BB. Uh, here we go with uh, the quiz. It's the television quiz, and we hope you do splendidly. Thank you. So here we go. What's the name of the actor who played Doctor Who? So there's his picture. What's his name? Everybody's breathing a sigh of relief after that last quiz. That's question one. What's the name who played that Doctor Who? And question number two. What's the number of this Thunderbird's rocket? You can look as close as you like. I've got rid of the numbers off it. So what's the number of that Thunderbird's rocket? Number what? Question two. Question number three. Little Britain was created by two comedians. Can you name them? Both of them. For one point, name two comedians that created Little Britain. So you need two names for that one for one point. Question number four. What was the name, or is the name, of Smithy and Nessa's son in Gavin and Stacey? So they had a baby. What was his name? So that's question number four. So Nessa's and Smithy's son. What was he called? Question number five. Absolutely fabulous follows two women growing old gracefully called Patsy and who? So Ab Fab was followed two women growing old gracefully called Patsy and what was the name of the second lady what was her name I think that's quite tricky that one question six in hello hello who owns a small cafe in France during World War two what's the name of the person who owns the cafe just his first name will do if you get both names no extra point so that's question number six Hello, hello. And number seven. In Benidorm TV series, what is the name of the Spanish hotel? So in Benidorm, what's the name of the Spanish hotel? That's question seven. Question eight. A soap opera Brookside was set in which city? So the soap opera Brookside was set in which city? Question eight. Love this next question coming up. Well done, Lucy. Been in that hotel. Eight. Uh, question nine. A true or false? Roy Cropper's shopping bag belongs to his real life mother so true or false question Roy Cropper's shopping bag belongs to his real life mother is that true or false so question 9 is a true or false question 10 EastEnders is Walford a real place true or false so in EastEnders, is Walford a real place? True or false? Question 11. What does this man present on TV? So what does this man present on TV? Don't need his name, just what he presents. That's question 11. Question 12. In what year did Channel 4 first transmit on air? 
So question 12, in what year did Channel 4 first transmit on the air? That's question 12. Question 13, in what year did Bruce Forsyth retire from presenting the main series of Strictly Come Dancing? So in what year did Bruce Forsyth retire from presenting the main series of Strictly Come Dancing? So what was the year? And question 14, true or false? Has Spice Girl Mel B ever appeared in the TV soap Emmerdale? So true or false, yes or no, whichever way you want to go, has Spice Girl Mel B ever appeared in the TV soap Emmerdale? That's question 14. And question 15, the last one. What was the name of the seaside town where the comedy Faulty Towers was set? So what's the name of the seaside town where Faulty Towers was set? Okay, question 15. Okay, there we go, the telly quiz. How did you all enjoy that? Wasn't too bad, was it? Hmm. Give us, <coughs> I'm just choking here. Give yourselves a few seconds uh, just to gather your thoughts and then we'll do the answers and then we'll go into the final quiz. Okay, see you in a couple of seconds. Finish choking now. Okay, we're back for the answers for quiz number four. Barbara liked that one. It was quite good, wasn't it? Took me a couple of hours to make that, but uh, it's well worth it. So, quiz four, here go the answers if you're all ready. So question one, what was the name of the actor that played Doctor Who? And that was Tom Baker. Tom Baker for question one. And question two, what was the name of the Thunderbirds rocket? Uh, what was the number, sorry, the Thunderbirds rocket? That was number two. Number two for the Thunderbirds rocket. And question three, Little Britain was created by which two comedians? David Walliams and Matt Lucas. So we need both names for one point. There's no half points. None of that cheating know what you're like Amanda Smart uh, anyway and question four what was the name of Smithis and Nessa's son in Gavin and Stacey and I can hear you all say it Neil it was Neil was the answer number five Ab Fab absolutely fabulous follows two women growing old gracefully Patsy and who so what was the name of that other lady is either Eddie or Edina so either or will do there Eddie or Edina and number six hello hello who owns a small cafe in France during World War II? That was René Atois. So either René will do or René Atois for a point. Well done. Number seven, Lucy Jane, you know this one. In Benidorm, what's the name of the Spanish hotel? It is called the Solana. And number eight, Brookside is set in which city? And that was Liverpool. Question nine, my favourite question of the week. Roy Cropper's shopping bag belong to his real life mother that was true it is true it is his mother's I, i'm amazed by that one it made me laugh and number 10 east enders walford is a real place true or false it's false and it was taken from walthamstow and stratford at uh, stratford uh, which were the two creators hometowns and they just mixed the two together so walthamstow and stratford and they mixed the two together to give you walford there we go and number 11, what does this man present on TV? He is the BBC Northwest weatherman, uh, Owen Wynne Evans. He presents the weather. And number 12, in what year did Channel 4 first transmit on the air? That was 1982, believe it or not, on the 2nd of November, 1982. And number 13, which year did Bruce Forsyth stop presenting Strictly Come Dancing? That was in 2014, and it was April 2014. And number 14, has Spice Girl Mel B ever appeared in Emmerdale? Yes, she has three times, apparently. Uh, once in 1993 and twice 
in 1994. Amazing. And the last question, what was the name of the seaside town where the comedy Faulty Towers was set? That was Torquay. So there we go. Tot up your scores. We'll have a quick look at your comments and let's see where we go from there. Well done everybody, Mandy 14, Colin 10, Yvonne 12, Alan 10 out of 15, not bad at all, Christina 10 out of 15, Shelley 14 out of 15, well done, Lee 12, well done sir, Julie 11 out of 15, Joe 12, well done Joe, Sean 9, not bad at all, Cheryl 10, Helen, come on you need a number there, come on, we need to know, oh 11 on the next one, there we go, awesome, well done, that's a brilliant score. Barbara, 11, well done. Tony, 12, I bet you got some help on those. Sophie, 11, well done. Uh, Guy, 11. Pom, 12. Bridget with a widget, 10, well done. Fiona, twist, 10. Uh, Keith Pryor, 11. <laughs> yeah, stick to driving, okay. Uh, James, 10 out of 15, got confused. Oh, come on. We'll come round and I'll explain later. Mark, 9 out of 15. Well done to you, sir. Holly, 6. That's a good score. Better than what I would do. Linda, 9. Grace, 9. Well, you perhaps you need a fourth gin. That'll help you out even more. But you don't watch TV. All right. Well, it's an excuse, I suppose. Jim, 10. Louise Ricks, 12 out of 15. Brilliant. Well done. Need the background flag for Zoom meetings. Which one? I'll send them over to you. Uh, Gillian, 12 out of 15. That's all right, Maxine, don't worry. You can watch us, uh, watch it again on YouTube in about half an hour after we've ended. Uh, if you just search Bellwood Quiz Night on YouTube, you can see us there. So not to worry, you can still do the quiz from that. Right then. Let's do this. The final quiz of this celebratory evening. It is Guess the Brit. So you're going to see 15 British people. All I need you to do is just give us your name. It's as simple as that. Just write the names down. Really, really easy ones tonight, I promise you. Would I do any more horrible questions? I oh, did think about it. Anyway, here we go. Quiz number five, last one of the night. 15 questions. You just need to write down the name of the person that you see. Quiz five, here we go. Shabba. So, who's that? Just write the name of the person. I'll send it to you, Sophie. Here we go. So just tell me who that person is. That's question number one. Question number two. Name the person. So who is that? Question number three, who's in the paint can? What's his name? So who's that person? Question number four, who's in that thimble? What's his name? Everybody should get this one right. So that's question four, who's that? Question five, what's the name of that person in the paper dart? What's his name? Question number six, what's his name? I know Linda, I'm trying to be kind. <laughs> so that's number six, who's that person? Number seven, who's in the toilet? What's his name?
number eight. Who's behind the duck? What's his name? Told you these were all quite easy. And question number nine. Who's behind the owl? And question number 10. Who's that lovely butterfly? Dead easy this round, isn't it? Number 11. Who's behind the cactus? Oh. So who's the name of that person hiding behind the cactus? And who's hiding behind the pear? What's his name? So that's question 12. Name the man behind the pear. What's his name? Number 13. Who's the lady behind the chili? What's her name? Just pop her name down. You've seen her face all over the TV, but what's her name? Two more to go after this. Easy round. This is a nice way to finish off the evening. So who's behind the burger? Well, it might be an avocado, Linda. You might be right. Yes, well spotted. Number 14. Who's that? And question 15. Who's behind the glass? What's her name? Is it a her? Could be a he. <gasps> So that's the last one. What's the name of that person? Thank you, Holly. Avocado. Okay. My emojis skills are absolutely rubbish, aren't they? So there we go. That's your 15 lots of questions there. Give yourselves a couple of minutes just to get a quick breather, a few seconds. So that was an easy round, wasn't it? I told you it wasn't that bad at all. See? Nothing to worry about. Quiz number one was horrible, I admit that. Everybody liked the highway code quiz. I got their brains thinking. There's no way I'd have been able to do that, I tell you. So, i tell you what we'll do. Let's do the answers to that last quiz. Quiz number five, Guess the Brit. I'm sure a lot of people got a lot of these right. But here we go. Number one, so Guess the Brit. Number one was Rowan Atkinson. Number two was John Lennon. Number three was Jude Law. Number four was Elton John. Number five was Ryland Clark Neal. Number six was Prince Harry. Number seven in the toilet was George Michael. Number eight was Winston Churchill. Number nine was Heston Blumenthal. Number 10 was Gary Lineker. Number 11 was David Beckham. Number 12 was Nigel Farage. Number 13 was Nadia Hussein of Bake Off. Uh, number 14 was Michael Caine. And number 15 was Patsy Kensit. So there we go. Tot up all your scores and let's see how everybody did. Now we'll just close the evening. Okay. Let's see how you've all done this evening. Apart from round one, I think we should have done quite well tonight. Yeah, Rachel. Number two was John Lennon. John Lennon for number two. Well done, Christina. Full house. Linda, 13 out of 15. Lee, 12. Yvonne, 14. Lucy Jane, 13. Bridget with a widget, 14. Fiona, 13. Helen, 13. Julia Russell, 12. Cheryl, 10. There you go. Uh, who else have we got? There's loads of numbers coming through. Alan, 11 out of 15. Well done, 56 out of 75. Really good score tonight. Carl Taylor, 12. Bridget, 15. Well done. Colin, final score, 54 out of 75. Very good score this evening. Gelly, 15 out of 15. Well done. Julie, 15 out of 15. Amazing. 
Barbara, full house. Told you they were dead nice, weren't they? You're welcome, Rachel. Uh, Holly, 14 out of 15. Well done. Guy, 13. Amanda, 14. Well done, sir. Mom, uh, Gillian, 14. Uh, does it count? What do you reckon, everybody? James got Nadia, but not the surname. What do we think? Yes or no, so that you can have a point. Let's see what the... Let's see what the panel come back with for you on that one, James. Sophie Lund, 14. Well done. Keith, 13. That's well done. Jill, 15. Louise, 15 out of 15. 46 out of, uh, 45 out of 60. Well done. I thought there were 70 questions. But there we go. Uh, Lucy Jane, 54 out of 75. Well done. Mark Taylor, 53. All respectable co scores coming through. Joe Winder, 54. Daryl, 52. Pom, 14 out of 15. Sophie, 59 and 75. Really good score, that, Sophie. 14 for Tony. Well done. Holly, 40 out of 75. Sean, 13 out of 15. Jim, 13 out of 15. A grand total of 43. Well done. Really good. That first quiz really threw people off, I think, there. Uh, Linda, 41 for your total. 13 for that round. Well done, Grace. Amazing. Jillian final score 52 you're welcome Lee 51 out of 75 Shelley 60 out of 75 I think that is the top score for this week I think thank you very much Linda you're welcome 56 out of 75 for Helen Jill 75s Fiona 40 uh, Bill 43 you're welcome another good quiz thank you very much Joe Guy 58 I said 10, but it doesn't matter. It's all right. It's all about fun. That's all it is. 15 with Nadia. All right, you can have 15, James, with Nadia. Go on, we'll be kind to you. We did borrow your electricity today, so you can have it. Absolutely. Yes, we can. Absolutely, Holly. Uh, evil this week. <laughs> I'm sleeping in the shed. Thank you, my dear. Excellent. 45 out of 75 for Louise Ricks. Well done. 58, not bad. Bridget with a widget. 57. Excellent. So... There we go, everybody. Thank you massively for attending tonight. I know everybody's had a really, really busy week this week with VE Day celebrations. Please stay safe. We will be back next week at the same time, Friday, 7 p.m. Uh, please, please, please invite all your friends and family along because the more we can carry on and have a laugh, and that's what it's all about, just enjoying yourselves on a Friday evening during these very strange lockdown times. If you ever want to catch up on the quiz, obviously you can look at us again on Facebook, but you can also nip over to our uh, YouTube site, just in the YouTube search bar, just Bellwood Quiz Night, and you can see all the little videos and bits and bobs that we've done. Until then, please stay safe. I will see you next Friday, 7 o'clock. Shabba! Bye! Thanks very much, everybody. Please, obviously, say stay safe and have an amazing week. And we'll see you all back here next week, 7 o'clock Friday. I'll try and make the questions a bit easier for next week, I promise. <laughs>